one of the original colonies of the United States, the Massachusetts Bay Colony fostered a religiously entrepreneurial and legalistic culture from its early settlement days, nurturing a restless population that finally, after the revolution was completed, sent out bundles of people and packages to the western frontier. The Ohio River, out of Fort Pitt or Pittsburgh, attracted the adventure seekers and serious merchants and farmers. So didn't the Great Lakes, guarded by Fort Niagara and other fortifications scattered along the Appalachians. The Ohio guided flatboats loaded with freight and many New Englanders to the Mississippi River and Old Northwest Territory. Some settlement towns like Marietta, Louisville, and St. Louis were on the cusp of boom times when the 1790s led to the 19th century. The Salem folks that had dropped anchor on Massachusetts shore brought religion and foreign superstitions to the natives already living there. Pilgrim forays inland were sincere generally, but the Indians who initially greeted them generously fairly quickly became alarmed. Their earth was being partitioned and deconstructed. The so-called Brownists, a separatist sect, later called Congregationalists, set the stage for an American model of social government and feeble application of the Puritan gospel. The quote group from Leiden found themselves and the Mayflower, a merchantman ship, turned northward by the shoals around what is today Cape Cod. Roughly half the ship's passengers survived the shipboard diseases and hardships and ended up in a settlement named New Plymouth in 1620. From here, the pilgrims became pioneers, and the pioneers became settlers, and the settlers became the commonwealth of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. The foreign inhabitants spread a unique New England brand of behavior, ranging from the witch trials and hunts of 1690s to tea party shenanigans later in the 1700s, and an independence movement. After Salem, Boston was established roughly 10 years later. Massachusetts became the state in 1788. Boston, derived from an early name version, St. Montalstown, facilitated a shipbuilding and maritime commerce. While the first battles of the American Revolution took place outside of Boston in 1775, the only other battle that took place in Massachusetts occurred in September 1778 when the British burned the port of New Bedford. Before the actual war with Britain, though, Boston quote, patriots, not the football team, rioted first after the Stamp Act of 1765, passed by the British Parliament, enraged colonists in some cities. That tax was to be levied on social papers and pamphlets, no less, not on common needs of a household.
The mansion of Thomas Hutchinson, the lieutenant governor of the Massachusetts colony, was ransacked by the Sons of Liberty. More infamous were the subsequent Boston Massacre and, of course, the so-called Boston Tea Party, a mob undertaking at the harbor in retaliation for more taxation without representation. Anger was already simmering among Boston's residents toward the influx of off-duty British soldiers, the red-coated, quote, lobsterbacks, who were snapping up low-wage jobs otherwise desired by the colonists. A scuffle outside a customs house in 1770 led to British troops firing on and killing five persons milling about on the street. The massacre of innocents did not endear the public to any redcoat. Loyalists and non-loyalists then bickered over the ubiquitous tea. Three years later, the East India Company then was granted a monopoly over the tea trade in New England, further infuriating everyone, from Paul Revere to Samuel Adams. On December 16, 1773, a group of men dressed as Mohawk Indians gathered at Griffin's Wharf, promptly boarded three company ships, and dumped almost 50 tons of tea into the harbor. Most of it landed in piles on mud since it was low tide at the time. A customs agent, John Malcolm, was tarred and feathered by a mob in 1774. Subsequently, quote, the shot heard round the world took flight from northwest of Boston at Lexington. More than 70 Minutemen militia faced about 250 British soldiers. Nobody to this day knows who fired that first round. After the fighting, though, eight Americans were dead and ten wounded. Apparently, there was at least one wounded British soldier and some bullet wounds in British Commander Pitcairn's horse. Boston and neighboring communities, including Cambridge, are not just athletic boosters, but also maintain a cerebral aura. Harvard University dates from the year 1780, when the Massachusetts Constitution then referred to, quote, the University at Cambridge. Until 1783, when medical lectures were first given, the institution was properly called Harvard College. Harvard College was founded in 1636. The same year, the name of the town, Newtown, was changed to Cambridge in honor of the English University, where a number of colonists had been educated. In 1638, John Harvard, a nonconformist clergyman who had been in the colony for about a year, left his library of 260 volumes and half his fortune to the infant college. In his honor, it was called Harvard College. In the year 1640, the first president, Henry Danster, entered upon his duties. Two years later, first class, numbering nine, was graduated. Harvard's neighboring Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, is the brother or sister community of scholars. Science and engineering studies at MIT is not for the weak-willed or weak-hearted. Boston College and Boston University may be in the shadow of MIT and Harvard, but both of these schools measure up in the world of science, medicine, and finance.
Cape Cod and Summer Colony of Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket Island, too, didn't take colonial war and conflict with relatively peaceful natives in the area so seriously, and over time assumed a maritime focus on whaling and fishing, and later on, tourism. Thomas Mayhew established the first settlement on Martha's in 1642 at Great Harbor, Edgar Town today. During the whaling era, wealthy Boston-based sea captains and traders often created estates on Martha's Vineyard. There is a Wampanoag 
population on the vineyard, living mainly in the town of Aquina, or land under the hill. Today, the vineyard attracts numerous celebrity regulars, including U.S. presidents, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama among them. Black residents and Portuguese Americans make a larger impact on the area around Oak Bluff, famed for its clusters of architecturally unique residents, dubbed the Gingerbread Houses. Among the famous inhabitants was a man lesser known to the American public today, named Joshua Slocum. His life, though embodied an independence and determination of the maritimes of the North American seafarers and pioneers. Born in Nova Scotia, this intrepid sea captain, after several life-challenging bouts with the oceans in Fairhaven, Massachusetts, built a 37-foot oyster boat sloop named the Spray became the first person to sail around the world solo from Boston, 46,000 miles over three years, ending in June 1898, settled in West Tillsbury on Mars's vineyard, wrote a classic book about the journey, and mysteriously disappeared forever years later on another less ambitious sea excursion purportedly through the Bermuda Triangle. Josh, by the way, was a celebrity for some time after his solo voyage, even invited to the Long Island estate of President Theodore Roosevelt at Sagamore Hill, who was intrigued by Slocum's achievements. Josh disappeared in 1909, but was not officially declared deceased until 1924. 